morning it's another beautiful day here off in Cornwall and we haven't had rain for ages actually it was a late night last night for us compared with been attempting to get into bed anywhere from eight to eight nine o'clock so around nine so that we can be asleep straight away or read um, but the changing these patterns it's a bit slow and then it helps us be able to get up earlier for sunrise <sighs> but this um the this beautiful Sagittarius moon with the Gemini sun the moon being the internal internal thighs so if we were to draw linear lines because there is linear lines but there's linear lines in the masculine the 3d the tangible so i mean muscles nerves all the stuff that we are able to see with our normal human eye spectrum of vision it's a 3d tangible reality um but now we have great technology and we can do mri scans and x-rays mind you x-rays is the ability to see through layers of different densities layers of different frequencies depths of different frequencies we were talking about depths and layers yesterday weren't we it's like everything that goes on when we're in the darkness we've got all this sensory things of spinning vortices and wormholes but it's not quite because it doesn't have the full optimum resonant frequency pattern of what's going on but we're getting closer to it and it's our spiritual bioorganic energy pictures that we did in the summer of 2016 off Pinterest when we discovered it. That was the first thing we had to be able to start visualising, but not to visualise in a visual sense in a third eye, because we have darkness. Um, and even not to, like when we went to see our the best friend of the accountant lady we used to do work for, who's a graphic designer, the first thing she said when we went, to, and she's a, um, did a little bit of psychic work, but not much, but she did, um, because I think she found it too stressful, but she did do one for us. And the first thing she said when we walked in was we've got a massive beam of white light coming in through our head. And this is when we had just been, this is when we were getting Reiki attuned or we'd finished the Reiki attunements. We'd have to dig out all our paperwork because we've done paperwork and done things over and over in our head. <laughs> To remember what we've done in our life which is one of our coping mechanisms for our memory to <laughs> remember where we've been and what we've done um, and then life would present us with things like always doing different jobs we'd always have to do a new cv so we'd always have to go over stuff so this was all stuff about that repetition with a twist be it consciously or subconsciously to keep neurological pathways going so mirror neurons and beginner neurons is what we've been calling them have been ones that we've been realizing have been util been utilized a lot and it's that family we speak to the adults have the mirror neurons and the daughter has the beginner neurons so our energy is constantly learning from the daughter's beginner neurons because we interact and talk energetically because we interact and talk that brings in the conscious awareness which is um and what we talk about um has made us be able to understand this and the adults bring in the mirror neurons and he's the masculine energy and she's the feminine energy and we always respond and react the younger ones tend to come out with the feminine energy but that makes sense because we've growing up we had we grew up around masculines, so our masculine energy is more developed, even if it was in an unhealthy way. Um, and But with her, even though the feminine energy comes out and it's younger, it's getting older now. Um, and sometimes it always gets stuck into that loop of the trauma and the victim story narrative. Which then would... Oh, we'd go over it and the day after it's like we didn't want why do we say that what's going on um but cats so understanding cats and cats behavior because cats and animals especially cats because that's what we grew up with but animals and nature 
which is, has been always had our back. No one else has always had our back. <laughs> Not even us. But now we've always got our back. <laughs> um, so, oh, why do we open with stuff like that? Where does it go? So, so we're talking first thing this morning on here because, well, okay, Sagittarius is higher learning, number nine. If you know where we're going, the T word, <laughs> and not T cells. <laughs> Are T cells related to the immune system? We always used to get ill, always. Um, but we did start navigating getting ill. I mean, even when we used to have fun, we, we had fun, we were better with drugs than alcohol. Alcohol would lose our mind more, um, lose our memory, black out more, become more um, promiscuous or not. Sometimes it'd be us that instigate it. Sometimes it wouldn't. Um, so, yeah, drugs were better for us because we were able to stay, I don't know, we were able to stay more co-conscious. We wouldn't black out as much. Alcohol was much more of a poison for us. And the marijuana, I mean, that wasn't a drug or a recreational drug at all. That was medicine, that eased our pain that enabled us to socialize um and the more so as life went on because as life goes on unless we take care of ourselves we degenerate but that isn't really accurate fair wording ah okay where's this is where we're going because we've done our best since we were 15 and we were 13 and a half stone and we lost four stone in three months to look after ourselves but the information that we were getting from external sources was kind of inaccurate to the symbiotic harmonious relationship of synergy to nature which, and we're nature so that's inside us and because we grew up with masculine energies and no intuition and no one had our back and no one believed in us and we weren't taught to believe in ourselves we always had to source our information from externally and that was wrong. So what we're going to go into now is, I mean, not only when we grew up, we had stuff projected onto us that we were like a mum. So we were, you know, consciously and subconsciously. So therefore, you know, if the stories that we get fed about our mum is she was emotionally unstable and this, that and the other, and it's all negative, And then it's projected onto us that we're like a mum. We've really... I haven't been going to have much of a start in life, are we? If she commits suicide at 32. Um, we were never acknowledged. I mean, if a kid's doing certain things, a lot of the sign is there's something not going on that's not correct, not in harmony. If they're playing up, there's something going on that's not in harmony. But yeah, so our EDS, none of our physical ailments were known. Wasn't acknowledged or recognised because of the stress and the pain and our parents' inability to see past their own grief and their own pain and slight narcissist, narcissistic characteristics and tendencies um, and an inability to put the, their child, his child first. His other one he was mostly fine with because he was a male, he understood him. So therefore he understood him, he had to understand the difference of men and women who are in their natural energies. Although I think his natural, I think he's quite dominant in his feminine energies, but I think he's dominant in his masculine feminine energies rather than his feminine feminine energies. You see, this is the fractals within fractals. You have masculine energy, you have fe feminine energy, you have the feminine energy in the masculine, you have the masculine energy in the masculine um, and vice versa with the feminine. But then you go down again, and in that masculine energy, in the masculine energy, you have the masculine and the masculine and the masculine, or the feminine and the masculine and the masculine. Or in the feminine energy of the masculine, you've got the masculine energy and the feminine of the masculine, or you've got the feminine energy and the feminine of the masculine. And so these are the different layers, these are the different depths. And this is us finding the ability to put words to all of this that's going on. Because what we want to do is put the pictures and the diagrams, but we've not been able to do that yet. Why is that? Yes, there's the pain in the wrists. Yes, there's the focus and the attention. All of that's going to get onto the, the food we're going to talk about and the minerals, which is also goes into the EDS and the rest of the pain that was missed out on when we were younger. This is us being able to talk about the narratives about our mess, our childhood, 
to create the message without getting so trapped in the emotion and the trauma pain because we've navigated through much through so much it's still there but because we're balancing out our internal ecosystem and we're opening up the different channels so we're going to talk about the eds and certain minerals um and the and the did because we had that when we were younger too but of course and we had autism but of course we were really smart and even though we didn't have the conscious mind academic words or the conventional way I mean of growing up I think one of us talked about oh, I don't know if it's on a video though I think it might be in an audio diary one of us talked about how we've watched stuff on autism and there's one autistic kid that learned how to communicate through watching Disney films and that's what we do through the stuff that we watch we're learning words we're learning narratives we're learning how a lot of dramas kind of happen and I know a lot of people diss EastEnders and the rest of it but I'm sorry but the new narrative the new narrators no it's not a narrator that would be someone telling the story in the background the actors because DID is kind of like acting but acting is conscious acting DAD is automatic subconscious different personalities but with the autism as well you're copying so there's a bit of copying and acting, but it's all automatic in the subconscious. It's not conscious mind. It's not made up. It's not to get attention. Um, and those are big things made up and get attention. Those are big, big things, belief systems that we had that have been projected onto us by others as well. Um, I suppose what we're getting to is if at all, if you want to help anyone, treat everyone as if they're special and sensitive and vulnerable but not in a patronising way, just be impeccable with your wording. Do your best to know who you are and not project stuff onto others. Do your best not to judge or have an opinion of others because, and if you do, take a step back and practice it, build up those muscles and go, okay, if I'm making that a judgment, if I'm making that assumption, what does that say about me? What's going on for me to feel the need to make that? If I'm getting angry about this, even if it's something that's perceived um, fair play to get judgmental about or have a strong opinion on, it's all telling you something about your internal narratives that you're unaware about. And when you can do that, you can be a better person to support others no matter whether they're more vulnerable or not, it just means you're a much beautiful, more beautiful, happy, balanced person to be around for children, for old people, for anyone that's vulnerable. But vulnerable doesn't need to be a weakness. Vulnerable doesn't need to be like we watched something the other day that said about, um, and this is a doodly thing because we've got doodly and tuny and we're wanting to use it and we're not. And then we get angry and upset with ourselves because we're not using it and we feel like we've spent the money and we're not using it. But that's the old belief systems of the money situation that's holding on to that because we are getting a lot out of it and spending the money. It's just in a very abstract, different way. It's behind the scenes. And this is our unique way of learning. Um... But in this thing, it said, you know, and it's about the wholeness thing as well and being complete because we still have that whole thing of being complete. Well, what does being complete mean? And there's all these these questions and words, especially in the Chakra Journey book. And it's like, well, we just struggle because we don't really because we don't really understand what it's saying because it could be saying this and we think it's saying that. But that's if they're coming from this perspective. But if you come at it from this perspective, if, if you come at it from this perspective, and we've got all these perspectives because of the DID. And as we grow up our younger ones more and the stunted generational consciousness, then there's even more perspectives. Um, and this is the this has been a multidimensional being. This has seen it from lots of angles all at once, but not visually seen it externally, not visually seen it internally, because we swim in the void. We're in the darkness. We sense everything. And there's this. So how do we how can we get you to understand we sense everything? I'm sure we've got to this before. So everything on the external can kind of be mirrored on the internal, like you can see externally, you can see in your third eye if you've got that gift on the internal, if you haven't, those certain networks have been passed off, um, passed off, not that they could have been passed off, but kind of cut off or had a dead end created through a fascia adhesion 
because either in your lifetime or a family member's lifetime or a cultural lifetime and so those pathways get cut off because it either uses up too much energy or it needs to be cut off because the energy will be deficient or in excess which therefore will turn on the synapses at the end of the nerve cell and if too much energy or too little energy goes to that area it will either create too many protons, too much activity. Oh, so that's just from watching the thumbnail of the Quantum Queen Oracle, where it's a wormhole and a proton card. All we have to do is read that title and look at the thumbnail. And all we have to do is read the titles and look at the thumbnail. And we internally know the message that's there, not that we consciously know the message that's there until we do these practicing games of getting it out to share what it's like to be inside Zanoni Snowflake's mind. Her mind not just being up here because your mind's not up here. If the multiverse or the universe is a mental construct, mental just meaning a faster, higher vibration, then... Anything in your body that's got a faster, higher vibration is mental. And if you look at it from Hindu philosophy and Sans Sanskrit, this is um, consciousness because everything is consciousness. Everything is God. And then everything has its expression of God. So you've got God consciousness or consciousness expressing through a stone, a rock, expressing through a plant or even then expressing through a mineral. Plant, mineral, rock. That's that game. Yeah. And that's why all these games are really good. And that's why we have collectives. And that's why in certain generations you have like certain dance moves that go on because that collective is fitting a collective pattern and the collective pattern needs to change and shift. So you get certain fashions and clothing to access a, a visual sensory stimulation. You get certain patterns in dancing to access the movement pattern patterning and how deep it goes or how external it goes depends on all kinds of things to the individual. But that's then where you have these collectives. So the latest one we were watching lots of was the Wednesday dance that was going on. We watch a wide array of YouTube videos. But it used to be Gaia but then it sounds like we're just sitting down watching you two all the time and we're not because we do our restorative yoga when we're doing it so sometimes we're upside down sometimes on the front sometimes we can't watch at all so we're just listening to it and sometimes it's other things um and we're not we're not just spending all our time watching it we just don't see anyone else it's just us <laughs> so we're actually putting this western eastern cave spiritual awakening enlightening whatever journey <laughs> Yeah, all of, all of it's kind of done it. So, but consciousness has been, wording changes. You've got etymology. That's why etymo etymology is really good. And wording changes. So therefore the original meaning of the word and then the word that's used now. So when people say consciousness now, sometimes they think it's that like you're just conscious and it's consciousness being aware of what's going on. But just because you're conscious doesn't mean you're aware of what's going on. To become a responsible responsive, self-responsible, self-accountable human being. And this is by, not yet, but medicine. This is actually why we prefer the private med medical system in America. But there's the, the non-private one here in the UK is good for certain things. So for us, it's about having a hybrid. It's about having the non-private for certain things, like in the 3D and immediate stuff, but people with chronic illnesses, they need the private medicare system like in america because the doctors here don't cut it i mean one of the first things is doctors will say don't google our doctor googled in front of us the 10th cranial nerve the vagus nerve to tell us that we were wrong when actually he googled it and either he didn't scroll around the page or whatever we think we bring people out of their professionality and because of us and our energies inside we bring them into their younger aspects so we changed his internal energy we were kind of a high highlight of his day to see because we weren't like his average patient so it brought up a oh look we've got thingy coming in wonder what's going to come out now because you never know what to expect with us but he googled it said we were wrong but we weren't wrong so you know and then it's too stressful going to these places anyway so it's like life for us and the way other people we always have people say that they are just feel free to be completely them when they're around us 
if they're okay with being completely them. If they're not comfortable in their own skin, they don't actually like to be around us because they, we take them to a depth they're not comfortable to with. Um, and again, we've done deep sea diving down to 30 metres um, when we did our paddy. So we've done a lot of this stuff and all the experiences we've had in life, we've had in life to gain that physical, tangible experience for those ones of us that are fragmented and not connected to the internal ones. Because this is about the superficial and the external ones, not superficial being fake, superficial has been the superficial muscles and the internal ones. But of course, you have that in between that connects the external and the internal, which is the veil which is the in-between I mean you've got like Eve's readings of this and then you have um San that says about it seems a bit like to her and her understanding it seems a bit what's the word a bit wrong a bit inaccurate to talk about mending the veil because the idea is to take the veil down so how do we word this one? But for us, the veil is the bit in the in-between bit, between the external and between the internal, and it acts as a, a protecting material. Like, like Gore-Tex. So Gore-Tex is an excellent waterproof material. It doesn't let water in, but it lets oxygen out so you can breathe. And so, but it lets water out and oxygen out. So it lets water it. It doesn't let it in, but it lets it out. So you're getting into some kind of fabric woven network like an animal, which stops water going in, but lets water go out so one can sweat and so one can breathe. So there's this circulation, ventilation, and all the things in our house that are wrong. It's not our house, we rent it. It's what's kind of wrong in our body because we attract ourselves because this is the the energetic mirror attracting thing but it doesn't always have to be the op the obvious opposite because this is the family member that said you know if you've got something going wrong on your front shoulder where's the opposite is the opposite on the front right hip is the opposite on the front back hip is the opposite on the left back hip or the left front hip is the opposite on the back of the same shoulder is the opposite on the front there is the opposite on the front there you get all these opposites on different linear planes whether it's linear horizontal linear vertical linear vertical diagonal linear vertical horizontal gets complicated and that but this is the linear where you've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared c squared is the shortest route between the right angles so it's the diagonal between the right angle to give you the shortest shortest route but that's in the linear so this is where you've got things like the da vinci Leonardo da Vinci and the sacred geometry so you have the linear but in sacred geometry you have the linear and the circles behind the object the picture the pattern that is what we see in our 3d vision behind it you have the sacred geometry which would be what metaphysically speaking what we see in the 5d it's all there but if we were actually able to see all of this at once like russell said when he had that experience and he closed his eye it would be too overwhelming and you'd sort through sort short fuse your brain networks but this eventually is going to be the case and this is how the future of ai and technology and the invisible screens is coming into play so that people get used to all that stuff going on and the bombardment of information so that other structures in the body can be developed because this is the evolution of consciousness but we need to have the involution of consciousness so that our internal circuitry can handle the external circuitry because it's all circuitry because that's the torus so stuff that seems outside of us isn't outside of us it is us because it's in our torus the torus being the energetic flow being the soul and then that goes into us because we are the center bit of the torus which is the body and depending which pattern of the torus depends whether it's the you know the red orange yellow green blue wavelengths the wave being the quantum the particle being the atomic the tangible the seen the unseen the untangible being the wave the expansive energies from like the heart colour vibrations up and the contracted energies the densely compressed expansive energy which is from the heart chakra down um because we had that the the daughter that came into her house she was like we learn physics that day and it's like well why do we need to learn physics and we were like ah and so we told her why we need to learn physics because this is physics we are connecting circuitry electric circuitry between our forefinger and our thumb from a reflexology perspective so that's from our feeling finger and our thinking finger 
So the mind is in everything in the body that is of a faster vibration. Um, and the faster vibration from a singular perspective, from a universal perspective, from the universe perspective, is a particle. It's the scene, the tangible. It's a bone, it's a muscle, it's a ligament, it's a tendon, it's a cell, <laughs> it's bacteria, blah, 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 blah. But from a quantum perspective, a wave perspective... It's a, the movement and the flow of energy and everything's always moving. Even an atom, the only constant is change because atoms are always vibrating. They're just vibrating at a different speed, which gives different densities, hence a slow vibration in a rock or a table or something that we perceive to not be alive um, because we put humans on our pedestal and we're all so well and <laughs> amazing and have it know it all. It's like... <laughs> Um, and then you've got the chemical reactions where there's a living reaction going on. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going off it and on it this morning, but this is bringing it all together. And this is because of the videos we've done over the last few days and doing the same video. And this is what, this is the pattern that was going on before doing the similar, same video on different channels, but going, well, this isn't following the structure of what you're meant to do from um youtube and think media and how you do things because that's how you do things to the, to the conventional understanding of society and we're not doing that i mean yes we would like to earn money off youtube and become self-sufficient but we just have to trust that that will happen as and when if it's meant to but th we're doing exactly what we're meant to be doing at the moment and we're using it as a platform to heal and connect our sensory systems but sometimes we need to the huge and YouTube's really good because it's you, you, which is you, the viewer who isn't us on an obvious 3D thing. But from a quantum thing, it is because you are me and me are you. Because on a soul level, when you go back into certain depths and layers of the dimensions after you die and after your physical body dies, but your energetic body stays alive, your soul stays alive. We're still floating in certain dimensions until we find our way back to source energy. And when we go back to source energy, we're complete, we're whole. And the fragmented energy from soul energy, from source energy that went into the souls that then went in to be reincarnated because they want to have a play on playground earth. <laughs> It's a whole mixed bag of spectrum and it's about feeling the whole mixed bag of spectrums no matter what it is without the reactive emotional state to understand it is just what it is, which is always what we've been saying before. Oneness, nowness, isness. Thank you, Eve, for your latest card reading of Aquarius to um, help different ones of us to remember that and bring different ones of us together. Because we put the call out to consciousness, to God, to soul energetics in our unique way. And all of this will come out in the stories in future. We just still don't know how to put it together. But we do, don't need to know. Like we said the other day with our garden and it's the unplanned stuff that's growing. We've just got to keep doing what we're doing as we're doing it. Even if it makes us uncomfortable. Because this is how it's working for us and it's all coming together. And you, anyone that has been following us and watch us grow and likes to watch people grow and transform. There's going to be parts that you're aware of that we're not aware of. Because we're watching ourselves grow and transform at the same time. Because this is what we're using to help us grow and transform. But we're doing it consciously. Whether we're able to get that conscious awareness out or not. We are doing it consciously. And it may not be all of us that's consciously doing it, but some of us are. And we get glimpses of remembering that again when we come round to that pattern again. So it's the treasure hunt game. But not a game as in we're making it up to get attention or do anything like that. We're, it's a game. It's the game of life. We're doing all we can because we were desperate to stay alive. We wanted to live and we didn't know how because of everything that was going on for us in our unique way but this is going on for others whether it's just a fraction or a part of this that's going on for others because there's so many out there like us um, or, or parts of us not maybe all of us together but that's why we're so beautiful that's why we're so special that's why we're so rare because it's not often you'll get one person with such a complexity of stuff all together but it means we'll be able to reach more people 
but therefore we need to have really healthy boundaries and be really healthy in our body and our structure and everything and comfortable and strong in our own skin because we're going to cause a lot of people to react and people when they react they project outwards so we need to learn not how to take that inwards and that's what we're going through the process of doing we understand so much more than we realize we understand which is fine by us because when we get to that stage of understanding it consciously it's just going to open up so much more like we said yesterday the more you know the more you don't know and so we have to take it slowly and gently because a puppy a kitten a baby child they're not incomplete they're just growing and it's that same thing that we need to put onto someone that's autistic or someone with down syndrome they're not incomplete they're just growing and it's just growing through a different network that expresses consciousness differently. And it's what makes us resilient, what makes us authentic, what makes us beauty, beautiful in our difference is our difference, is our way to be able to be proud and content, content and happy of who we are in whatever expression of consciousness that is. And that's what's becoming ever so more challenging in the societies that we live in and it used to be more acceptable in west um, in eastern worlds and developing on or, or in developing countries but the more the developing countries that were more spiritual are switching into the more western and it's their turn to have the technology boom and the the power in the world or whatever, economically or whatever the westerners go more spiritual but then this is a western mind eastern body um, and it's swapping, it's just like that's a collective swapping again, just like we're swapping. And there's no wrong or right, we need to get out of duality, reality of there's wrong or right. or And the understanding that be differing belief systems is beautiful, it's about living from heart, value-based systems. And so we're getting on to minerals. So, I mean, and that's why we had to do it our way, because we knew our way. And to start with, we were, needed to do it our way, but with the support from others. But others couldn't support us, they because others have to do it their way to what's comfortable within them, because there's very few people that are able to actually put others first, even when they're the more vulnerable one. But especially when they're the more vulnerable one, but they're so intelligent, they're not presenting as the more vulnerable one because they've actually been able to manage their emotions and suppress a lot of stuff to accommodate other people's needs and put other people first. And that's why even with us in this situation, we know if there's ever someone more vulnerable and more in need, we would, um, and had no one, we'd, we'd switch into the alternate personality th that needed to be what they needed to be f to help them through it. I mean, that's not hypothetical. That's what we've done heaps in the past already. Um, but we need to be able to know, because others don't, when they are actually truly more vulnerable and in need, because words don't say it, because everyone, we're living in a society that's so focused on victim at the moment, and so victim, focused on victim consciousness, which is okay, because this is part of the, the collective process of repatterning, because women have been hard done by by men for so long and I know a lot of men now are finding it hard for that narrative because then they're getting the backlash of something that happened years ago but again that's the vic they're coming from a victim consciousness again otherwise they'll be able to see the bigger picture because it's about seeing the bigger picture um and we learned a lot of this from technical analysis on bitcoin when we we're stoned watching it playing around with emas and smas we can't access any of them at the moment just like we can't access any of the bookkeeping accounting ones, they're long gone. They'll be the ones that will come back last. So the technical analysis will come back first. But that's because it's patterns and it's graphs and it's the linear, but it's using lots of the Fibonacci. So we'd always do the Fibonacci stuff sequence, which we're now getting on to Lucas sequence, or one of the Lucas sequences, um, with all the rainbow colours. So you're connecting numbers with colour. You're connecting, that was again a connecting of visual sensory systems. But like with YouTube, our body is a tubular body and it's the you thing that we're talking about see how we sidetrack and then get there eventually but at least we're getting there eventually now and it doesn't completely go which means that the maze is being unraveled to eventually get into the labyrinth which we never had the labyrinth 
Um, and so rather than us just getting old and degenerating, we've been degenerating since we were a child. We, need, we never regenerated or uprooted to a, a complete level in the, in the body patterning and structure like a child normally would. Um, one of the main functions of that is, is the love, healthy, nurturing love. I mean, when we under, understand the difference between looking after and giving basic survival of a house of shelter and food. Love actually is a basic sh shelter, but there's love looking after and there's love nurturing. You can nurture a plant or you can love a plant. It's very different. Um, no, you can nurture a plant or you can look after a plant. It's very different looking after a plant. You definitely generally just get really good at remembering to water it and figure out the sunlight. If you're going to nurture it, you start understanding well, what type of pH does the soil need to be? What type of... Um, okay, this bug is starting, to eat. if it's in the garden, this bug is starting to eat this plant. What type of natural bug spray can we use to keep the kill the bug, to keep the plant? But then if you get into the whole complete wholeness, symbiotic relationship with nature, we get into, okay, biodynamic gardening, living by the moon, living in the symbiotic relationship. What insects do I need to eat the bugs to stop killing the plant? Okay, we need that insect. Okay, well, what flowers do we need to attract that insect to stop eating those bugs to stop killing that plant so then you've got your original plant that tracks the insects that tracks the right side of sort of insects to eat the other insects that are killing the plant because that's an in excess of energy or a de excess or a deficient energy and it's that same in excess of too much energy is the protons the protons is the positive going down into an atomic level in our 3d dimension positive means good but when you twist it round or mirror it and go down a layer go down a depth go down a dimension into another reality down into the um, down into the atomic reality which is still seen still tangible maybe not with the naked eye but with the tools and the machinery we have the positive if we're going to put a positive or a negative to the positive unless there's a right balance and relationship going on between the positive and the negative the positive is negative because too many positives is negative so the positive is the active energy it's the doing energy it's the linear it's the line it's the masculine from our perspective because if people work on different layers the masculine is the right it is the past because it's the doing because it's the, it's the active we get into oh my god we get into verbs and english and tenses now look at us going all around with our processing language disorder and our maths and the science multi-potentialite <laughs> we got really good at self-learning so the past is the memory it's the data it's the information it's what's already happened it's the connective tissue in the body but from someone else we've been watching, another YouTuber we've been watching, he sees the right as the present. And he's older than us, but he's not that much older than us. I wouldn't say he's more than a decade older, but a decade does say a generation. So therefore, a generation older, a decade older, there's a slightly different connection due to a linear 3D perspective of the evolution of consciousness and the evolution. And the involution. So you've got the evolution, you've got the involution, but then, and then you've got different collectives. I mean, this person's gay, so that changes it again. But this person is a male that's gay. Our father, so a, someone that's gay would maybe have more feminine energies. But our father, we would say is masculine energies, but then kind of got more feminine energies inside. But they're more masculine, feminine energies inside rather than feminine feminine energies inside maybe for gay i always have to go there because we're just thinking out loud now and we don't mean to be on pc correct we're just understanding energy because energy switches and changes um it's all about like you know permutations and depths and and that neurology graphic art stuff that's coming into play we've done bits of artwork similar to that in ways before um so the reason we wanted to start this was, so with Elos Danos and these chronic ailments and chronic syndromes, and I mean, 
Ellos Danlon Ellos Danlon syndrome is a gift because it's teaching us the matrix, the connect understanding of the matrix of the body, understanding of the connective tissue on the bo in our body. Um, we put it down more to, to the electromagnetic energy, but it's the connective tissue. It's everything. So it's the electromagnetic. It's the chemical. Um, we would almost say Ellos Danlos syndrome is an umbrella term for lots of things, and then there's lots of different types. You've got type one, type two, type three, vascular, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think vascular is more like the circuitry, but then you've got your visceral, or I don't know, maybe you get confused about them. It doesn't matter. Um, but we think autism. No, we think Ellos Danlos syndrome is actually the umbrella term because it's a malfunction of the collagen protein, but just because it's a malfunction of the collagen protein doesn't mean it can't be amended and rectified. It just means it can't be amended or rectified from the same plane dimension of perspective. You have to go down to a deeper layer. So food, fuel, in that food, then you've got the vitamins, the supplements. They're the product that the retailer, that, that the supplier sells to the re retailer to sell in the shop to the av everyday person. But if that isn't, well, even if it's local, um, it still needs to be transported from the supplier to the retailer that's selling it. But the supplier to the retailer that's selling it is just like the supplier of the retailer that's selling it to the everyday individual person. Um, so that could be walking, it could be cycling, it's getting further away, it could be a car, it could be a lorry. So you need some kind of or a plane, you need some kind of transport. So it's the transport system. The transport system is the minerals. So you need the transport system, whatever transport system that is, the minerals, to be able to get the vitamins and supplements to the place it's get, its destination. But then the transport system, I mean, okay, if you're walking, I mean, we've done our jungle trek, I mean, you took the man at marijuana trail between Atre to Bukit Luang in North America, um, North in Sumatra, North Sumatra, Indonesia, Atre's um, not actually Indonesia. Um, but it's very overgrown because it doesn't get used much. So if you're walking, you are able to transverse across areas that are overgrown and haven't had a path built out. But the more advanced the transport method is, whether you're getting a, ve a vehicle, um, and not so much a plane, but you do need the takeoff and the landing on the plane, unless it's a water plane, because then you've already got the water there and you don't need to build or construct much. Yeah, let's just put that one out the window because that's going to throw us internally, guys. Because it already has done. We've not fought that one before. <laughs> but whether it's a road or a plane, you're going into like air, swords, the faster vibration, the mental construct. And this is where in the tarot, we have to get out of the linear part masculine thinking apart thinking that yes it's mental yes it's a sword but rather than it being mental from our conventional understanding of what mental is being up here academic in the head conscious speaking words books it's mental as in a faster vibration atom and that can be anywhere in the body and that can be expressed through knowledge anyhow and that we've got all the answers inside we understand how we're going to read the tarot cards more we are aren't we um, and we're going to start doing it as we are, not worrying about our words and the rest of it. We get this is us building up to it. There's been the ideas going going round. They're being more able to hold on to, which is reminding us of calcium because for calcium to work, calcium has to adhere to the fascia to its matrix, like Velcro. For two Velcros to put, the soft bit has to adhere onto the hooks, which is getting into diatomaceous earth, because diatomaceous earth is the old fossilized hooks, which builds the rose. So you've got the supplements, the vitamins, the lorries, the trucks, which is the, which is the product, the lorries, the trucks, which is the transport to move the products, which is the minerals. And then you have the roads that need to be built for the lorries to drive on. And that's the diatomaceous earth, because diatomaceous earth is 89% silica. And we've got a video on it, but it's really long. A few people have really loved it and loved the content. But everyone always hates the mm, starting bit, which is what we actually had to do 
to master and conquer the chaos because the chaos is the anxiety it's an influx of energy with nowhere to go um be it fear anxiety excitement whatever it's all of it um and so for us to actually be able to talk and be coherent we had to do that at the start because that's what we do to connect to source energy um and we didn't know how to edit videos and it's not like we'd get onto the video and just do it then we would be doing it on our own for <laughs> could be a couple of days or hours or weeks before we'd actually get the videos done but then we go into a hyper mass where we were doing lots of videos um but we never trusted ourselves which is understandable because sometimes we'd use I mean even when our brother sent us a message the other day he's slightly dyslexic and he's thought of loads of tools and ways coping mechanisms because of his intelligence because we're both intelligent um to cope with it But of course, then if you've got these coping mechanisms going on, we're using up more energy. (laughs) So we're going to degenerate more. Um, But he, one of it was, he was meant to say agree, but instead it came out disagree. It didn't come out agree or disagree. There was disagree and did agree. Did agree and disagree. So it was a part of the dyslexia and a part of the auto spell check. And that's why we, we always check the auto spell check, but it, it seems to do stuff that we miss sometimes, but then that's the DID. You can't always be, you know, always checking up on yourself. So one of the things we've also reprogrammed in us, so part of the reprogramming of the subconscious, which can only be done when we're in these child state thingies that's going on. That's why a lot of the things is the sleep reprogramming and the rest of it. But we do do that in sleep reprogramming. But we can't go into long periods of deep sleep. And we aren't able to fully explain why that is yet, but it's something about getting lost. It's something about going too deep in certain vibratory networks along certain wavelengths, which will be not conducive to the healing of us becoming whole and complete. Because we have to keep us all within a certain spectrum of resonance so that we're all connected and co-conscious and there might be some of us that are, there might be some of us that are here and some of us that are here that aren't on the same spectrum of resonance but there'll be one in the middle that'll be able to connect those two does that make sense it only makes sense i suppose if you're able to understand the words that we're talking about anyway and the the things of resonance so you have to have if you've got a spectrum of resonance within this field on the larger and a spectrum of resonance within this field on the larger they're not connecting so there has to be some kind of overlap so that's why we do the top of the pack and the bottom of the pack being the subconscious and the unconscious and they're separate like a line but the line isn't a line the line is just a line for our limited conscious mind 3d tangible reality to be able to understand it until the involution evolution of consciousness through the expressions of human beings Means has got to a certain point and it can only get to that certain point where it can then put the line together to make the circle um, to know that actually the conscious and the subconscious then become the same because they're the connecting points of resonance on the circle um, but the circle is perceived as a whole on a 2D perspective but that's not really accurate to get more of the whole on the 2D to get more of a whole on the whole spherical global perspective, it's a circle with a twist in it, a figure of eight. Figure of eight's our master number. Figure of eight's the vibration of our birth given name. Figure um, number eight is the star card in the tarot. We are a quadruple star, south node, sun, moon, and descending descendant line. And we're a double Leo, but we're on the Leo, we're on the, and so, Our 29 degrees Leo is the very start of house one. So we're on the house one, house 12 cusp, house six, house seven cusp for our sun and moon. No, no, for our sun, our south node, our descendant and our north node and ascendants on the cusp on the other side. of. So it's the cusp of house one, house two, which is the end of Leo and so therefore the start of Leo, Virgo um, and the end, and it's the real end, it's 29 degrees, 22 and for the like descendant and 22 degrees, 30, 29 degrees, 30 something for the North Node. But then for our sun, it's um, 26 degrees. And we know that because 26 equals 8, 26 is 30 or 8, that's our sun. Our moon is 17, second tier 8. 
Um, and for us, it's important because the multiverse functions on ratios, on relationships. You can't just look at the part on its own. You have to look on the at the part in relationship to another part, gain the understanding of those two parts functioning together. And then the more, and this is why we have people that are getting become masteries in certain areas, which is nothing bad or good about that. That's their thing. But for us, it's not beca about becoming mastery in a certain in an area unless that certain area is complete transformation transformation to show how autism and physical ailments and disorders and how mental ailments and disorders are our gifts, are our traumas to make us become resilient, to show the involution and evolution of consciousness through an authentic individual expression of human form, consciousness in human form, which doesn't follow the conventional order of one personality being more dominant in one chakra at a certain period of time and then in a linear format through a, a timeline, a linear timeline, through their personalities change through age as different awareness and knowledge doesn't just come into play and into the awareness, but then action is put onto that awareness because it's all about applying the knowledge. If we don't apply the knowledge, we don't get, gain embodiment, we don't gain wisdom. Um, so there's lots in this I mean this is our passion our passion's inclusion our passion's involvement of everyone no matter how different and to eventually have society have society and laws and stuff change due to this and now whether that's a direct exchange of change from a 3D level which is probably not <laughs> It's the change of tapping into what Cole Jung calls the collective unconscious and changing the collective unconscious energies so that then that energy has an impact on the human that has the capability of changing it on their own or getting the collective together to change it because they're reactive and they're reacting from an emotional state but for a 3D positive um construct um or thing to happen and so that's why everything gets so complex and why there is no wrong or right there just is what is and how do we perceive what there is and how do we be able to be fully connected to our heart and yet at this and our body and all aspects of our individual beingness with all the archetypal energetics um while still being able to compartmentalize in the right in the right moment and time because if we are someone that compartmentalizes like people at doctors and all kinds of professions need to compartmentalize but then at the same time so that you don't end up you need to go back and revisit those compartments and give them a spring clean and check them out so do you need to do your your how whatever you do to process that so that eventually you are processing those emotions and they're not just getting trapped and trapped um and the pressure's not building up, literally, the higher vibrational mental consciousness isn't building up in that compartment um, without, a, because if you do that, you need to keep making the lid stronger um, of the Tupperware pot. Otherwise, the Tupperware pot will, will pop off if it's not a strong lid and you put in fast vibrations, like you put in steam boiling water. Again, we speak all of this from experience. <laughs> uh. Um hence why the body from one perspective is getting tighter and tighter from the masculine energies and thinking the part to keep these higher faster vibration energies contained and dense because if they do explode and that person is in a one dimension pattern thinking there's going to be too much energy in one area, which can either be over a slow process of time, too much positive protons in one area over a slow amount of time or a quick amount of time. And that's then when dis-ease happens. And that's then when we buy of cancer of a certain part of the area, because that part of the area will relate to a certain patternology, a certain emotion that wasn't processed. And yeah, what we just talked about. Um, and so to counterbalance these overactive masculine protons we need the negative ions to give them a hug um and that's the feminine energy that's the, the the wave rather than the part and the atom vibrating it's the wave the movement of energies in that kind of figure of eight movement but it's much more it's a figure of eight on this plane and a figure eight of that plane and it goes round. and that's what we we actually kind of see that sometimes 
it's like um, the best way I can describe it and it's not something we necessarily do consciously it's just something that happens as part of the process in our meditation and our breath work of which we spent a lot of time in because that's all we could do to <sighs> ease the mental emotional physical sexual spiritual pain to calm our nervous systems stay co-conscious and not lose it and black out so that one of us, which was becoming many of us, killed the host, host body. And all of this goes down, I mean, it's we need the fuel, clean fuel to feed us, but we could be eating clean fuel that doesn't have the proper symbiotic balance of minerals in the soil so we're not getting that proper balance of minerals in us as humans and therefore there's going to be an uh, instability going on um, and so to counterbalance the extra firm rigidity that we've got to in certain humans in certain collectives especially in the western world but um you have people with Ehlers Danos syndrome that become hypermobile, that subluxate and dislocate, that shape shift because they have to. And when it's done on an unconscious way, in a natural way, when that person has heart value based systems and had has has had nurturing, healthy love, and so therefore it's part of the process of the involution, the evolution of the reprogramming and repatterning on a subconscious um, and a superconscious way of the body. There isn't any pain, but when there is, but for, for us, it, it hasn't been like that. But it hasn't been like that from one perspective, which is a perspective we need to focus on to keep us alive. Is because we have the intelligence, we have the resilience. Some people might call it stubbornness. We don't. We call it determination to stay alive. To ride through this on our own, even though some of us didn't have our back, other ones of us did have our back, we just weren't connected. But we've always been strongly connected to source energy. Source energy from a 3D, shamanic, natural, tangible perspective of nature. And uh, by, from the lower vibrations, the red, orange and yellow. And the faster, higher vibrations of a spiritual man-made and the spiritual non-man-made and cosmic. And we have had the heart connections for for us, and therefore we've had the heart connections to to bridge that. Just not in human relationship dimension, but we have had glimpses of it in human d dimension, but not long periods of it. And. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the rare of the rare. We're the anomaly of the anomaly. And it's the anomalies of the anomalies that are important because then you've got a bigger circle that includes everyone. But one needs to be able to understand themselves, understand how they learn and then express it in words that's in a way that you can reach the layman, that's in a way that you can reach the scientists that don't that think it's all pseudoscience because they've got their own traumas and depths that they're in denial about and can't go to. That's in a way that you can reach the quantum scientists. That's in a way that the science, um, the maths, the English, the law, the art, the geography, the history, all the different languages of each field speak to each other. Because the biggest field is the electromagnetic field. Where... It's not about being a light worker because there is no light in those dimensions. It's darkness, but darkness isn't a bad thing. So there was something we watched the other day that said about light, lights and light work or the spiritual term, um, something about the spiritual thing that needed to be let go. But we can't remember what that is in the moment. But for us, some of the spiritual terminologies and things that need to be let go is this thing of being a light worker, is this thing of going to the light. You know, it's people like Reem that are amazing because she says it's about the light and the dark. And it is about the light and the dark. It's about the black and the white. It's about taking the ace is perspective. It's about taking God conscious perspective. It is about taking the baby's 
perspective. Oh, there they are walking past. It's about the um, beginner neurons. It's about the beginning neurons and the mirror neurons. They um, just walk past. We've not seen them for ages. <laughs> um, you get to hear. You can hear everything in the house. So it's like the van. You can hear everything. But it's always in one spot. So we're always getting put on hyper alert and adrenaline. You hear that low rumble? Rather than the low high rumble of a plane in the sky or a helicopter in the sky, it's a low rumble on the ground, like a lawnmower, and all these low rumbles that can be <laughs> frustrating for tarot readers are actually really important because they're helping to ground in the faster energies, um, and yeah, we're not going there. So with EDS, so we were talking about iron yesterday, we are talking about the oranges, weren't we? And the second chakra and how, why do oranges relate to the second chakra apart from just the colour perspective? And it's because runners eat oranges. And then it went on to the fact that they eat the oranges, it rehydrates them. Um, you need the vitamin C to get the iron, to absorb the iron. But we learned a while ago from our liquid mi minerals that you actually need copper to absorb iron as well. Um, and... If we're right, this is something we learned from Jane 108. The molecular structure of iron and the molecular molecular structure of chlorophyll, which is in plants, hence the important eating plant-based diets. The reason we eat meat is because meat has all of the nine essential amino acids in one place, and it's a more of a denser object, dense density. It's a slower vibration because when you go to plants, it's a faster vibration. The roots are a more dense, slower vibration. The green leaves are faster vibrations. The flowers are even faster vibration and the fruits are even faster vibration. But the fruits are faster vibration, which is contained. We're not, I don't know where we're going with that. We're not going to go down that avenue quite right now. So I suppose this is what happens with tarot readers that don't vocalise everything that's going on. So this is what's happening with San in her head, but maybe San sees it, it but if we Sam sees it visually in the cards that pop out, Cindy sees the cards, but then she has visual stuff in her head. And so the more we've watched some of these people, because we've put the our desperation out to people to support us, but it can't be in a direct way because we're too much for people and they're too much for us. It's come in through a lot of these tarot readers, but there's, come, there's other tarot readers as well. So you've got Mariana, you've got... Um, but Mariana's fragile. We don't go to her too much. We do go, she is a lot. Cindy's the, the most and that's the one for our kids. But then that's the ones for the other ones because she's amazing. But she's also very triggersome to us. Um, so there's lots about, yeah, we're not even going to go into that because it's going to get misconstrued. So we won't go down that as avenues. But yeah, Cindy, San, C Aries, Cindy's an Aries, you see. So Aries is the first house. It's a younger energy. Um, it's more reactive energy. Aries is our heart, it's Venus, but it's in our house eight. There's the eight again, creation and destruction, which is the collective home of Scorpio. So we, we're we going to have Shinto Sai astrology come out as well, because that's all really important as well. So going back to that, the Western astrology is kind of more modern because it incorporates the outer planets and the asteroids. The Vedic astrology just has the seven planets, the personal planets and the transpersonal planets, it's planets which is your five, your, your, your sun, your moon, your Mercury, Mars, Venus for the personal planets. And then it's your transpersonal planets, which we see as the bridge, which is Saturn and, and Jupiter. Saturn, your contractive energies, your active, your proton, your masculine, Jupiter, the, uh, the slower vibration atoms, the tangible world, time master, linear, lines. Uh, your expansive energy is Jupiter, your feminine, and blah, 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 blah that said, your negative, your ion. But your outer planets are the collective, which is the generational patterns. Um, and that's your Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. But they're also the modern rulers of um, Aquarius, Pisces, and Scorpio. So there's two water signs in there and an air sign, which is important. Um, but it's a water sign which has a fiery sign in it. Scorpio is kind of fire and water in a way because it has the sting of a tail. And Scorpios don't live in water, so I wonder why Scorpios are a water sign. It's an interesting one, that. Um which is house eight, house 12 and house 11 on the collective. 
And so for us, it's always about looking at the collective and then looking at the personal. So about, for us, Scorpio's house, well, our, Scorpio goes into a few houses. So for, for us, Scorpio is, I think it's house three and four. And I think it's our Libra, which is Pluto. Four is net, um, four is Sagittarius with a tiny bit of Cap. No, because Capricorn's house five, and I think that's Capricorn, Sagittarius, and Aquarius. So we have to look at it again. But this is where you go with the unequal houses, because equal houses is fine for the linear limited mind to start with. But eventually, when you understand there's this movement, just like you have a wavelength of the sun, you have the shorter days, which would be a smaller amplitude. And the longer nights and then you've got the longer days and the shorter nights, but to get the positive amplitude and the negative amplitude, so the height and the depth, the plus and the minus. So for it to be plus five and plus and um, minus five on a graph for a wavelength, you would end up having an equal day, equal night. Hence why the equinoxes are important, but they only happen in certain places. I think on the equator, you've got an equal day, equal night. And it's only the further away you go from the equator, where you then end up getting like in Norway, the Northern Lights, where you get like, ah, maybe that's why, where you'd get like, all night in winter and all sun in summer for a certain period of time. So maybe that's why they have the northern lights in winter because they need some form of light. Otherwise, people would be, get seriously depressed with sad seasonal affective disorder. Maybe. Um, we've seen the southern lights. We haven't seen the northern lights, but we have done northern light energetic exchange through live stuff like this. This isn't live though, this is a, a video pre-recorded. We would be doing it live, but we can't do it live on Sononi yet because you need 25 subscribers and we went down from 15 to 14. And we never like it when it goes down to start with, but then we then other ones of us point out the numbers. Yeah, and why is it good that we've gone down from 15 to 14? Because 14 Sagittarius, it's temperance card, and we've just had Sagittarius full moon, so it shows all the alignment. It does, doesn't it? And things bounce up and down, so it's got to go to come down before it goes up again. Yeah. Not pull arrow back before it gets the pressure to go, the force to go forward. And to make a ball go really high, you either have to chuck it and use your own thing, or you bounce, it's bouncy ball and you bounce it on the floor. Yeah, well done. So this gap in the thing is the centre that's off centre on the lower chakras and the body alignment. And then it's so we're exp off, we've got to a hole in our connective tissue fascia in the bottom parts of the body. And then we can congest it on the top. But that makes sense because the collarbone's fused, so it shortens this area up here on the left, which is going to impact our lungs and the rest of the pattern in the body because that whole linear which we talked about in the Lefruma healing live on Shintosai the linear fascia meridian fascia train that pattern will be affected all the way through which is going then going to affect the the um, surface area plane fascia train that comes from the Catherine wheel spiraling movement off that through the energy that goes through the body um, and an EDS body is like sandstone so you've got to figure out ways of creating support and structural boundaries for the body when there's these influxes of energy and we we support ourselves so yes they got very confusing because I don't think we've managed it all yet but sometimes that's not our fault sometimes that's YouTube's we all have to watch our videos from the different channels because that's watching it from different energetic dimensions and perspectives um because that's also what we've programmed to put into it so it's a, it's not just about belief or non-belief um or placebo it's about the belief with the intention but if you have no beliefs and the intention is pure then it doesn't matter but at the moment it's not you can't just get to no beliefs we're so doctrinated and domesticated and conditioned that we have the these family lineage beliefs societal beliefs cultural Oh, that's beliefs. That was a good release. Um, so now for us to be sitting like this, we're sitting on a um, our, our back sacrum slightly supported. Our hips aren't supported, but we've got the roller underneath our legs. And we were sitting cross-legged, actually, but then we kind of swapped. 
So our tongue does stuff in the scap because the tongue is like the fingers when you collect a, a circuitry system in the body. But we also do it at the teeth because each teeth tooth relates to an organ, relates to a meridian that goes down to a certain body. But whether you do it on the centre of the tooth or into the gaps of the tooth depends as well. So you can put your tongue in here and then you can twist it and that will help separate the gap in the top of the teeth that goes on. So, and when you do yoga, there's about the breath in the body and you can feel the breath when you inhale and you exhale, you can feel the temperature of your breath and you can feel where the breath is in the nostrils. So when you inhale, the air's going to be cooler than the internal of the body. So we're actually doing really well now because we're getting really hot. Our hands are cold and we're hot here. So this is to do with the circulation. So we're having something going on with our sinus sinus passageways clearing now. And then we so present that what we talk about, so that's we talk about this now, so that's gonna help too. Yeah. So when this was going on and we were eating dairy products which we haven't had for a few days now. We did have a bit of goat's milk we just used up. But if we do have dairy products now it has to be goat's milk and not the cappuccino oatly milk because that's more processed but we just we prefer that now <laughs> but we'd actually prefer to have freshly fresh goat's milk but we haven't been able to find that anywhere here yet um with the bath full of cold water so that we could dunk our head in it so that whole hot water therapy cold water therapy and the switching between the two we do that on our fascia with the eyes with our eyes open um and we'd have to dunk our head in there and the pain would just be on Oh, the pain's unbelievable that we've had to go through. I really just can't believe we've gone through all this and we're still here and alive without the marijuana. But, um, just using our own tools. It's just, it's amazing. So, so going back to the, the, ED, the iron. So chlorophyll has got one molecular strand different to iron, apparently. So we have liquid chlorophyll as well. And we also mow the lawn barefoot because you get a lot of stuff absorbing through the feet. So you're not only getting the negative ions and the grounding earthing effect when you're doing it barefoot, but you're getting the freshly cut grass, so you're absorbing all the chlorophyll through the feet. Um, but you need copper to absorb iron too. And copper stabilises your fascia, stable, is a collagen stabiliser. So automatically, anyone with EDS needs to have their minerals looked at, needs to have copper to stabilize the collagen this is what we believe um needs to have diatomaceous earth because taking cal calcium supplements doesn't work why take a supplement that the body makes itself if the body's not making it there's a reason it's not making it or it might not be that it's not making it it might be like it's like velcro the hooks aren't there for calcium has to adhere to the fascia for it to work it has to have this kind of cohesive gluing type thing it has to bond somehow see all see all the how the words actually overlink between different dimensionships one needs to have a relationship or a bond with that animal we, one needs to connect a relationship or a bond with the garden with another human but we can't fully bond or have a relationship with another human if they haven't really bonded with themselves but to say that's their own fault or they brought it on their say selves is really unhealthy because maybe they didn't. This is what's gone on for them from a child. It's really hard to learn something when we haven't had the mirror neurons to copy someone else. And if you're the person you're copying that hasn't got it and isn't done it doing it in a healthy way. But that's why one of the most empowering things is to understand how we learn as individuals. So we don't want to project stuff out there. We just want to keep sharing us, keep sharing our story, keep sharing our ways, knowing that we've already done this automatic deep subconscious reprogramming that the most important thing to come out of us is the, through the heart electromagnetic field into the other so the deeper the other gets to their heart connection the more they'll have the keys to open um and the knowledge to open up the codes and the treasure chests to all this information that we have that we aren't actually able to verbalize yet um but we will be able to in future but the more people that are heart connected that get this they'll then have this energy coming in that will come in and go to where it needs to go in them to give them the tangible experiences through whatever sense sensory system to have the most fun easiest smooth ride on this challenging roller coaster of a ride of transformation to self-awareness the self, full self accountability self responsibility and self-awareness 
And that's why consciousness has our back big time, I think, because you've not got many people doing it the way we're doing it. And that's why it's been really challenging for consciousness too, because it hasn't had anyone do it before. So it's figuring it out as we're figuring it out, all figuring it out together. And there's a lot of trial and error when stuff like that was goes on. So there's a lot of added pain, which is why a DID is beautiful, because it's a way of compartmentalising and not being in that network of that pain so that we can stay alive because the suicide was strong. <sighs> it's been a very, lots of seesaws having to really stand in the middle because if you go to seesaw each side, if it's just on one plane, you'll fall off. And initially we were hanging on by tiny threads over the edge anyway. Hence the book that we took with us outside when one of us created the narrative to get us naked, which comes from a story when we are 18, which we'll share one day as well. That might be an almost 18 plus story. Um, to bring the book on the edge. We weren't on the edge, we were the over the edge, but it was the closest to it. But the reason we bought that, were able to bring that book for the little ends that we were in was because it was a book wrote, written by our first love, who... Yeah, so we won't go into anyone that further. Who we had to get over big time. Our <laughs> little ones had strong connections to, to him. Um, so copper is really important for the collagen stabilisation. Copper is also really important for iron absorption, like vitamin C. The more iron absorption we have, the more oxygen we have, so the more we're able to connect to spirit within. Because we, we said yesterday in one of our videos, it's about breathing in that oxygen. It's about breathing in spirit. It's about the great spirit, which is God, which is consciousness. It's the Native American Indian way for saying God is, is it's great spirit. And then you've got the spirit, but then you've got, I think the spirit, spirit and soul is different though, I think. Although in this moment that we're talking about it, we see soul as a man-made religious. Is it man-made religious or spiritual perspective? And great, so that would be the faster vibration that we talked about earlier, whereas great spirit is the um, shamanic, the lower vibrations, the red, the oranges, the yellows. But going back to the copper, so now copper works in is a co-factor it works in collaboration with i don't know the right wording again we're not thingy there was a video we just watched we'll try and leave the link when we upload this one um which is like i don't know the seven telltale phone signs that you're i don't know zinc or copper deficient or in excess he talked about too much rather than too little um but for us it's both because we have did and did separates the networks in the body so that you can get one whole net multiple of networks functioning at once but that multiple of networks might have some that overlap with another whole one that functions at once but none of it's the whole human body network that's functioning at once and so depending which network you're in depends some of them might have too much copper but another network might have too little copper um Hence the hypermobility in some places and the rigidity in other places. The too much tension, too much stress, too much tightness, but then too flexible and broken in other places. And that relates into autism. A lot of people that are autistic have this kind of problem. Um, and dietary needs, it all comes into play because all of this is the connective tissue. It goes around everything, which, you know, then goes into the intestines. But you, if you've got too much zinc, then it stops the copper working. If you've got too much copper, it stops the zinc working. So you have to have them balanced out together. Um, and this can create things like being too cold, circuitry system, all kinds of things. And this is like all stuff that, I mean, at the moment, we've got cold feet, cold hands, but an, a really hot face. So for us, that's maybe circulation. We're talking a lot, so we should probably get off this soon um, and probably go and put our legs up. We're absolutely exhausted. We haven't managed to walk backwards again. So with us, we can feel the breath. If you breathe in, the nostrils, the air's warmer and it goes on your inner passageways of the nostrils, we think. Now, we're not sure because we're in a moment where we're utilising a lot of us 
and what we want to say may come out backwards. So it's not that what we're saying, what we intended to say is wrong. It's about as the information goes through the processings and the meridians, it kind of gets twisted and comes out wrong. Um, and so that's, you know, makes life very challenging. Luckily, we've always been up for a challenge and always faced our fears big time. Um, so, so, so yeah, if we turn ourselves upside down, it helps circulation get to our legs and our feet and our hands. Um, but yet at the same time, we're sweating on our armpits a lot at this moment. So the, when you breathe out, the air comes out. Yeah, so when you go in, it kind of sucks the nostrils in. And when you breathe out, it kind of flares it. But we're quite rigid here. So there's a lot going on on redoing this. That's why we've always looked at people with big noses and commented on them. It's not us judging them. It's us bringing our awareness and our attention there. because, And then bringing their awareness and their attention there. So energy goes to that area there with them. Energy goes to that area with us. And our nose then can understand the mirror neurons patterning of their nose so that we can develop this area more. <laughs> hence why our knees, hence why our, <laughs> hence why our teeth love watching Cindy. <laughs> Anyone that watches Cindy will understand that. Hence why our knees love watching people that talk about our knees. Hence why our nose loves people with big noses and big nostrils. I think we commented on someone's nostrils that if he ever sees this, he'll understand who he is. Um... But that then sounds like we're bullying, but we're not. We're just autistic and we're direct. And yeah, we, we didn't know there was an unspoken rule book of social etiquette. Let alone because someone told us about that once and how they hadn't read it, you know, metaphorically speaking, because if it's unspoken and not written, you can't read it, can you? But, you know, we didn't even know it existed. Um, so, you know, for the fact that we've gone through life and, and made as many beautiful connections with people as we have with all this stuff, that's meant to limit you from doing these things, but it only limits you from doing these things because people get diagnosed it, get the label put on it as they're a kid, and so then grow up with those limitations projected onto them. So we have to really change the whole way of doing things. And, you know, we, we've been on our own for a long time, so all of this has gone through us, and so we have all the answers of how to create a beautiful society and system and even down to little things of you know like what was going on the other day with glass bottles and how you could make it a law that only recyclable and by bi only biodegradable and recyclable plastic could be used and make a law that like some labels come off really sticky labels on glass drawers and plastic come off really easy and so only that kind of glue can be used so it comes off really easy and then you can recycle and even better than recycle you can upcycle glass bottles and um, plastic containers so that when people do want to start making all these home projects you can have a place that you can go to where you take all your washed and rinsed, rinsed bottles and upcycled bottles and plastic and then if you're making products of your own but you need a certain container that's different to the ones you've got you take them one back and then you can do a straight exchange if it's suitably washed and sterilized by the person for free or if it's just washed but not sterilised and maybe needs to be washed again or sterilised, there'll be slightly different charges on it, but it'll be minimal. Um, just like in the olden days when glass bottles and cans, you'd get money back for them and things. Um, because there's so many people, the, the rubbish that we've been witnessing up at the willow tree um, and the recycling, I mean, people this are so often opened. Why don't they just get a bin to put the rubbish bag in so the rubbish doesn't get opened? Um and if all the stuff that was in the rubbish was plastics that could be biodegradable, stuff would break down and be biodegradable a lot easier. But at the same time, it's not about that has, has to be. It's not about not flying. We have, we have friends' projections of voices like it's bad to fly, it's this, that, and always going around us because we have a lot of people that are into the environment and all those things and it was too much. But it's not about not flying. You've got planes that can be made of hemp that can use hemp fuel. So therefore, it's not about not flying. It's about flying in a new way. This week about flying. No, it's not. Last week was flying on the cards and that summer thingy, wasn't it? Yeah. What is it this week? It's choice, isn't it? I think it's choice or something. It's the two pathway one, isn't it? I want to go have a look. 
because it was Sunday yesterday it changed, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know if we can put the flash on. So it's number 30. We can put the light on. It's number 30. Oh, it's, yeah, it's the different one. It's the three and the five because they're all sixes or nines and so they can be put into sixes or nines. So it's the bottom two. 30, making a choice, you're right. And the five of swords. So it's that five and that change again. But we're on the six of swords and stuck in the muck and metis. And for our actual wheel, we're on the lovers, the tower, the nine of swords and the king of swords. So we're in sword, so we're in swords energy. Um, and we're in the nine vibration, which if you've got trauma or you know, um, and it's done in a curve, it can get put upside down to a six. So we're in the nines and the sixes vibration. And if you look at them all, you've got like 66. I don't know if we, we're getting it in here. You've got 66, 99. The last one's 99 as well. I mean, you've got 36 commitment and the nine of cups. And last week was 20 flying and 18 the moon. And they're flying to each other. Where are they? These cards here. There we go. These ones here. So you've got the happy daylight one flying to, flying to the night witch one. So we're really getting to understand the patternology in the artwork. Well, some of us really understood it anyway, but the ones of us that didn't understand it are understanding it. So yeah, what we want to talk about is just about the relationships. We said about the oranges yesterday and the iron and the running and the fatigue but it's the actual iron that brings in the oxygen. But we did say about the oxygen and the spirit, which we've been saying. But then we wanted to say, because we did know this as well from our liquid minerals, about the copper, because you need the copper to help absorb the iron and to stabilise the collagen protein. You need the collagen protein stabilised so that you've got the healthy, strong, flexible, um, balanced boundaries to hold the faster vibration oxygen, like the Tupperware pot and the steam. A whole Jesus walking in water story. Do we say that one previous on the live? I think that's the Shinto Sai live for the Fuma healing. Um, but then to have the copper, you need to make sure you've got the right balance of zinc. So it's all interconnected, and we need to have um, but you need and the diatomaceous earth builds the roads, helps build the fascia, it's the 89% silica. There's a whole thing that we read out on our diatomaceous earth video, which is about eggs and eggshells are weak if there's not enough calcium in them but if you feed your hens diatomaceous earth they make the calcium the eggshells are stronger um, and diatomaceous earth is old fossilized hooks it helps us digest proteins easier it makes the networks in our body our fascia the hooks the velcro the soft velcro the hooked, hooked velcro um it helps detoxify the body as well and absorb heavy metals and toxins so this brings us into are limited any energy reserves so when we make stuff we don't necessarily sterilize it we don't wash it because all of that's extra energy extra it's not the extra time it's the extra energy which takes oh so it is the extra time because it takes longer we then the more longer we do something the more it hurts the more physical pain we get because we have to do stuff in small doses so we treat things like camping um so when we harvest our veg from the garden that salad yesterday we didn't wash any of it we just put it straight in if there's any soil or dirt on it that kind of acts like your diatomaceous earth or your is it your demite that green clay um you've got um or your charcoal because it's these things that help purify and clean out the body obviously depending on on it as well because i mean you could eat charcoal on burnt toast and the toast is like shitty flour and mm, shitty bread and that's not going to be very good charcoal but when we have burnt toast it's either a load of our different gluten-free flours so it's a lot of different gluten-free flour so the charcoal that we're having where's that charcoal come from because that's important as well um but it's not all of it or be it all or end all because it's also about our intention that we put into something. Um, and intention can almost be stronger than belief if the belief isn't so strong that it just cuts off the, even the possibilities of having intention or intuition. 
And so no one with even someone with the strongest of intention, it's not going to work if the belief system so rigid and it's not going to move. But then you don't have to believe in something for something to work. So there's always different angles and permutations. There's no one way. Um, I'm actually feeling hungry now. That's unusual. It was, took us ages to eat that salad yesterday and then we, we did. It was reminding us of when we were on drugs and had to make ourselves eat. Um, and then it turned out to be good. And that's another thing that's been confusing for us because this whole dance with energy and altered states of consciousness does take us into states that we're familiar with due to the drugs. And so then that confuses us, some of us. So there's all we, because it's all, oh yeah, it's complicated. There's something else we wanted to just say then. Is it the food, the garden, the vitamins, the charcoal? Um, it's gone so we're going to put it there because it's been an hour and a half and we're going to upload this and then we've got one more short to do of the citrus fruit drinking and the citrus fruit aligned with the tarot and what a journey from getting up and making the elderflower harvesting the elderflower champagne how do you harvesting the elderflowers in a sunrise morning which actually was void of course. I think it was the void of course we harvested them because then it turned, it was about 6.04. I think the moon went into Sagittarius. So it would have been the void between Scorpio and Sag energies, which for us personally would be um, Libra. Hold on. So us personally... How did we get from Libra to Scorpio? So if Scorpio and Sag energies, if you're looking at it from a house perspective, would be eight and nine. So that for us would be Venus and Taurus. Our Taurus is Chiron. I think we've got another Taurus as well. Is it the MCIC? Yeah, so our MC is Taur, oh, and so therefore it's a Scorpio. So, ah, oh, that's how we got to it. So, eight, house eight and nine for us is Aries Taurus. So Aries, we can't do this too much because there's something going on. Um, Aries is our Venus, Taurus is our Chiron and our MC. MC is related to work, Chorus, Chiron's related to the wounded healer type thing. So that's if you've had trauma at an early age, that's our, our little ones. So all of this we've had to go through with our little ones to do what we're doing to be able to get to our MC because that comes after our Chiron, which is the key in the symbology. Our, that's in Western astrology. So our Venus... In Western astrology is Aries, but in Vedic astrology is Taurus. And our Taurus in Western astrology is Gemini, I think, in the Vedic astrology. Um, I think there's a few. We've, we've done a whole comparisons on the table and there weren't that many, but there were a few that kind of stayed the same. Any of the ones that are at the end. So if you're at the end of the degree of assigned, so our, our North Note, our Sun... Uh, all our ones at the end of Aquarius stayed Aquarius. So the solid foundation is Aquarius South Node, Leo North Node, Aquarius Descendant, Leo Ascendant, and Aquarius Sun. But they're all in the last five degrees. So that means they're on the cusp of Aquarius Pisces and Leo Virgo which is fixed and mutable fixed and mutable so with the the cardinal fixed and mutable we put that in the sign as well so that the first so if you've got Leo that's a fixed sign like the masculine energies then in that masculine energies you've got the masculine masculine and the feminine masculine so in the Leo you've got the fixed energies fixed fire so in that fixed fire you then have fixed fixed fire no cardinal fixed fire fixed fixed fire and mutable fixed fire so that's what we do with the each of the the thirds of the leo sign so we're because that's at the end we're in the mutable fixed air 
and the mutable fixed fire very fast dynamic energies moving which we're out of the age of pisces into the age of aquarius there is a faster moving vibrational air so where we struggle if we're struggling to understand our energetics of our sun we look to the opposite of that so if you're an aquarius sun and you're struggling to understand it you look to the um, leo sun and that's why cindy and we trigger each other because our north nodes and south nodes are different um also she's a taurus moon that's why her and San get on well, we feel, because San's a Taurus sun um, and we're a Taurus Chiron and Taurus MC. So that's why we watch these people to get the energies, but then at the same time get triggered in ways. And that's why we've learned not to be reactive and not to comment, because when we do, they um, hasn't happened with San, but um, with Cindy, she gets reactive and comments back in a reactive state because she's not understood what we've said, because we've probably said it in a direct manner because of our autism. Um and she takes it personally, which is also what we do. So those energetics are in there and then she reacts bad. And um, yeah, there's a whole kind of thing that goes on. So we don't comment on hers. <laughs> um, yeah, so that and that's the cross. It's a very narrow cross because we've been talking about the cross lately as well. We lost it, but I think we need to go because it's getting on too long. But this is but this is good because everything we talk about on these videos, we then watch them back. And then with all the watching back yesterday that went on after a few times, this that means the sleep dream time reprogramming is focused on that. So we're really strengthening the constructive feedback loop of information. Um and I'm not sure if it was I think it I'm not sure if it's on one of our videos. Or if it's one of our personal audios or personal videos. But we were talking about the thigh because the Sagittarius rules the thighs, the um, hips. Liver sacrum. Oh, we don't know. Everything's going a bit all over the place for us now. Um, but there was something about us talking about the middle muscle of the thigh. Anyway, that was in... I think it's the early hours of this morning because we wake up a few times throughout the night because um, then we'll wake us up, up to let him in or let him out. So we'll get into a deep sleep kind of, but never quite. We also tend to use, need to use the bathroom a lot. Um, but again, that's all part of the thing of not going too deep into it for certain reasons. Um, the bed's okay for a certain amount of time, but if the energies are going to be strong and we're in the bedroom, we'll regress even younger. So that's why we'll then come into the lounge. So that's like the feng shui or the energetics of the house in different rooms. But that's one reason. There's another reason we sleep in the lounge is because we get into a certain patterning in the body and the bed becomes too soft and it will start causing us more pain. Um, so we have to sleep on the firm floor and do our kind of yoga. So as we can only be on one side for so long because like with the ALS Donner syndrome if you relax too much into one place you don't injure yourself and hurt yourself um we have to switch around and move around a lot but when we do switch around and move around a lot we've got our roller and we're either supporting our knee or supporting our heel like we're really we're thinking about the posture and how we are, are when we're sleeping so the, the our mind's never stopping <laughs> for very long but it does we do get moments when we get into our meditation state or breath state and this is what we think the the meditation's about it's not about getting into these deep states of meditation and being able to see the whole galaxy or go back in time to see how earth was created or to it's about completely going into the darkness going into the void cutting off all distractions from all sensory systems whether it's internal or external and becoming the vibration and we go into that state. We don't tend to know we go into that state until we've come back. And it's just like, ah, oh, we were gone then, weren't we? We were just in it. And there's a pure state of relaxation and recharging. And it's amazing. And we're never sure quite how long we're gone for unless we've looked at the time before we've done whatever, before we've gone into this breathing shaking sounding state um and then sun gazing the sun gazing in the morning is really good and we have done sun gazing. we did a really long sunset sun gazing the other day on the tree 
um, because it's all about the light refraction inside. I mean, when we were a kid, we used to, we, it was one time we flashed a camera flash in our eye over and over and then we couldn't see out of one of our eyes for about an hour, um, which was scary, but we didn't tell anyone because we didn't want to get told off and we didn't want to get slapped. Um, yeah, so the astrology, we're still going back to the astrology. So it's a Scorpio, Taurus, Axis, our Scorpio, our, our Scorpio's Libra. No, it doesn't matter. So we've, we've lost the connections to be able to work it out. But because we're doing this, we just, there's the ones of us that want to start doing our Jane 108 with the maths and the art. And there's the ones of us that want to start doing our astrology and we want to start doing it all. And I suppose we'll start doing it all and then we'll start sharing it and sharing our ways. And we want to put this all together and it's all going to connect with the tarot as well. It's kind of like what Russell's doing. Not that we've copied Russell, because this has been in us for ages. Um, but Russell does it from a more adult, poetic, artistic, creative way. Um, and we like the poetry and the words. We absolutely love it. But that's not our strong point. Our strong points like math and art, art and numbers, um, colour, pitch and vibrate and this and the body. Um, but we need the words then to kind of put it all, to get, all together and express it. Um, but there are so many ideas that's going on. But I think we need to go. We're getting tired. We're kind of losing it a bit. Um, but it's great that we've got this on. So we can kind of listen to it, watch this, listen to it in the background, listen to it before going to sleep. It's on the passion one that we're going to be... Oh, we got to start this day, haven't we? Yeah, we have to start this today. And rather than doing it all in one day, like we said the other day, we'll do the orange-yellow passion and the orange green guilt together so last week we did three in one week this week we'll do two in one week and then next week we'll be on orange blue which i think are, are the opposite colors aren't they it's it orange and blue's opposite and purple and yellow no i think it's orange i think it's blue and yellow's opposite and orange and purple's opposite we don't know we can't and red and green's opposite we don't know we can't think exactly in this moment but yeah, uh, that we so we watch like we watch off grid stuff to help us with our off grid, grid passion and dream. Um, we watch camper van stuff, so it's camper vibe. It's it's interesting though. It's a lesbian couple, van wives, the gay couple Tyler and Todd for the off grid stuff. They're the main ones. There is Max and Oki in New Zealand the van stuff. We watched him occasionally, but not really. Are they stopping van life after six years now? We did five years. See, all this stuff that's in the fashion now, we, we beat the fashion. We come in first. We've done it all. <laughs> Tiny homes, van living. Um, and it's Camper Vibe, which is a lesbian couple again, which we're lo loving. And she was like, sorry about the blue shoes, yellow sock combo. It's like, I think that looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves the photography as well and we love her photography oh my god there's so much there's so much um so yeah the orange blue is going to be interesting okay we're gonna go um we're not sure what's going to quite happen yet we're absolutely exhausted it's been full on i think we're just still gonna i think we might lay down with our on our front with our legs up so it's kind of a supported back bend while we just watch some stuff to distract us we meant to get out and water the garden. We are meant to get out and water the garden. We wanted to go forage the hawthorn flowers and leaves, didn't we? We did. We're going to have to do that tomorrow now, though, at sunrise, aren't we? Yeah. And we're going to have to give it a good water today and not before it's too hot. So, I mean, I'm not sure. So, hopefully before 12. Can we, can we get the time down? So, it's 9.18 now. Yeah, if we have a, an hour resting after this, so like to half ten. We can put Cindy on and listen to Cindy in the background when we do the watering. That will help because she's Aries and that's action. So whenever we're struggling with energy levels, we tend to put her on and listen to her in the background because she then triggers us and gets our energy going. But also because she's an Aries, which is action. So we find it a lot easier if we do have any tiny reserves to do the, the washing up and stand up or to do something that we're otherwise struggling with. Which we are at the moment because we want to come down. <laughs> We want to come down of the Sagittarius moon energies. Woo! 
<laughs> we're such a freak we're not a freak we're unique we have it tattooed on our shoulder because we used to get called freak at school and we hated it we're so unique yay that's much better <laughs> because we never started drinking really till university we drank once when we were 15 but it was all too much for us and that's why um eve's video of coming out of the bushes for Taurus, which is the little ones because when we were 15 and did occasion and 16 yeah 15 mainly and 16 and did occasionally drink so we lost all our weight at 15 16 and did occasionally drink i mean this one time we were so drunk but we were we're able to hold it better together more than a lot of people and so we helped our friend get home but then we had to walk back from her. So we would have been 18, actually. This was a time when we were 18 because we were living in... We weren't living in Falmouth, but we were in Falmouth. So we must have come back from university and gone out on a night drunk. Well, no, because we didn't go to university at 18. Okay, so was it before university, after travelling? Yeah, that would make sense. Oh, I don't, we can't figure it out in this moment. We'd have to really work it hard to figure it out. But the walk back from her place in Falmouth to the our parents, our father and stepmom's place in Falmouth, I think we were on the phone to a friend. <laughs> and this is just one occasion. We've always ended up in a lot of bushes. <laughs> we always end up in the bushes when we're really drunk. Uh, come to where are we oh it's okay we're in a we're in a bush we're in a safe space in nature <laughs> there's three stories that are coming to mind instantly when Malkins was put down and we were in new key we ended up in a bush i think that's when we we're 18 as well i think that might have even been twin towers night but that was in um thingies in the campground in new key where thingy used to work so this was in falmouth walking back from hers we're on the phone to someone some we I don't know we switched energies we switched alternate personalities so we were in that we'd been in the, oh that's it we'd been in the one that puts other people first and our friend needed the help so we'd switch to the alternate personality that sorted them out but then on the walk home there was no one else to put first so we then got switched into the alternate I don't know network that had more alcohol in it and got more drunk ended up in a bush couldn't get out of the bush that's kind of what we remember we must have been on the phone to someone but then that obviously stopped but in the morning we woke up our phone was in pieces the keypad thing had a a mouth chunk ripped out of it so our little ones we obviously went through a few different into our little ones so <laughs> yeah it reminds of us of our 30th when we hit our head going through that tiny barn door and went flying and our chicken fillets flew out and this woman helped us up that had really big breasts and it's oh you don't need these do you <laughs> and we got some good stories we have not just all wasted ones we've got amazing traveling stories we wouldn't get when we traveled through east asia it's like eight months of no drinking or well i'd say no weed but like you turn up into the middle of a beautiful we go on a walk through the <laughs> jungle turn up to a beautiful little water rock pool waterfall area and there's a whole spliff waiting for you on the side of course you're gonna smoke it <laughs> So, and then you you go on holiday, you don't do the proper, you don't do the east, north, south, you don't do the east, the more conventional pathway travelling route with like, the, you know, the Moon Island parties and stuff. We went down the west, but of course it was on a bank hol a holiday for them over there. So there wasn't any accommodation on this island we'd gone to on the west coast of Thailand. And um, so we ended up, I don't know, been with a French, some straight, a random French girl in a tent for a night accommodation. She had some, so we sat on the beach and got stoned. On this walk to the rock pool, um, waterfall area through the woods, there was one other person doing the walk, which was this American dude. And I don't know, it came out with, oh God, we could do a smoke now. I think it's because it helps us connect with nature and calm something down or changes the brain wavelengths or something. I don't know. We said it earlier, didn't we? And he's like, oh, well, we haven't got any to smoke, but got some you can eat. <laughs> like, yes, we ate some and we smoked some. Oh, so why are we talking about that now? We're talking about that now because we want to relax. Uh, we could smell that on something earlier as well, but we're not. Um, We do have some oil, coconut oil, we stuff left it's been there for ages in the fridge 
but we're going to make some cream out of that, some nighttime cream and some daytime cream. Um, but we will watch stuff and breathe and calm ourselves down, change the flow of blood to the body. We'll do the back bend first because we've kind of been in a forward bend, like how we're sitting doing this. Um, we'll do a back bend, then we'll have our legs up laying on our back and then we'll do a back bend again because back bends charge you up a bit physically in the body um, for when we go and do the watering because when we do the water we have to fill the water can up and we have to do forward bends so we're counterbalancing the body patterning anyway that's enough from us um we're really settling into our own skin after lots of shedding um thank you beautiful sagittarius moon Ah, Virgo's house one and two, two and three's Libra, three and four is Scorpio. That makes sense. And Libra's Pluto. Does that mean we don't have any Scorpio? See, just one more. Yeah, but we can't turn off the camera on here on our phone because um, the camera will stop. Sure, we've got a Scorpio. Of course it is. It's Uranus, it's Scorpio. So our house four is, is Scorpio and Sagittarius. It's a Uranus, Scorpio, Scorpio and a Sagittarius, Neptune. And our Scorpio is 25, 29. Our Uranus is 25, 29, Scorpio. The end of Scorpio. So that might be the same in Vedic, which our whole waking up process is fixed mutable just like the Aquarius Leo fixed mutable axes but the Taurus Chiron is at the start it's a nine so that's a fixed fix it's the start of a fixed fixed no it's not because it's 10 degrees as the first so it's just ah so we're going down another layer in depth like we said earlier so it's a, it's a cardinal so rather than the mutable fixed it's a cardinal fixed but it's a fixed cardinal fixed. Getting into it there, aren't we? So for us, the, the um, fixed signs axes are pretty strong. And that's why, because Pluto's creation and destruction, which is our Libra, house three, house three is the collective of Gemini. And we've just, because our grand eyed, communication between our brother started up again he was a libra sun and so it's all these sun because the sun's the masculine and external that connects you into this collective agreement objective reality it's tangible that are important to us because we were just talking about san and cindy with all of that and your vx is your fortune isn't it or your future so it's kind of fortune future work it's all a bit confusing but that's our capricorn which is house five yeah so our house five is Capricorn with the start of Aquarius and the end of Sagittarius. So this Sagittarius full moon is affecting our house four, which includes Scorp the end of Scorpio, um, Uranus and Neptune. How would you figure that one? Because we're on the collective axes of Sagittarius Neptune, which is nine three our Sagittarius oh yeah so it's 9-3 because it's the collective which so it starts with Libra and goes on to the Chiron and Taurus Pluto and Libra Chiron and Taurus the other side the pre-side before side of the ICMC then it goes which is in the collective connections bridge because we're the connector you see we don't master one thing we master the connecting we master the bridging we master the in-between we master the veil that needs to be unbroken and rebroken so that it gets out of the processed man-made materials that doesn't have the flow of energy like Gore-Tex where it can let water in but not out or the other way around because we get it back to front <laughs> <laughs> we're in back to front ones now because we know we got that back to front but if we attempt to put it the right way around again it's going to cause a bit of chaos internally and that's why india is so good because here 
A nod means yes. In Turkey, a nod means no. In Turkey, a shake means yes, and it means no here. And in India, it's just it's the wobbling dog head nod shake, and that's really good for the for the neck and the cervical. Um, and that's why this video is really good that we're doing now because we can feel it doing stuff down our neck after we've just done that into our back left tricep. We're standing and we're talking and we're attempting to communicate. So we're using our body. We're using our typical conventional mental mind up in the brain, <laughs> external to get stuff out. But we're also using the mind and every bacteria and every cell in the body because we're starting to move our legs a bit. Oh no, top start to be to stop that. Now we're at back. Now no more more. Yeah, I'm getting a bit excited, aren't we? And so then it's got our house four because our house four is the Sagittarius moon which we're in, which also we've got from Libra, end of Libra. So it's middle of Libra actually, because our house three starts at something like fourteen degrees. <gasps> Starts at 14 degrees Libra and there's the 14 in the Sagittarius again. All the numbers always just line up impeccably pretty much. It really is. So 14 degrees Libra up until... And because Sagittarius goes into our house five, that means all of house five is included, which takes you to the start of Aquarius. So we've got from the 14 degrees of Libra to something like two degrees. Of course, it's two, isn't it? If it's two. It's just before the halfway mark, so it looks like it's two degrees, but we can't get in really close here. So it's so something like two, three degrees Aquarius. But even if it's two, three de degrees, it's twenty small picture, 23 in it, 2023, 20, which is the five. Of course, it's the fives again that are lining up and it's the five of <laughs> swords in that car. Oh, honestly. And so why this is us for us personally, but us personally is the collective mirrored. And so that's why we feel we're so good for others and lots of others and that's why we're going to be a really good facilitator and host because we're going to be the bridge of lots of different things connecting together and because it brings in the start of Aquarius that means all of Aquarius comes into play so we're actually and because it ah so if that's the case that means all of Libra comes into place so from We've got now, with these energies covered, Libra, Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius. Aquarius goes, we have the opposites too. So that goes to Leo and Libra goes to Aries. So we've got the whole chart covered apart from Virgo and Pisces. So if we've said we've got all of Aquarius in and all of Libra, Libra is into house two, which brings in house two. So that means you can make the bridge because our Virgo goes into house two, which means you can make the bridge into the Virgo. So that's why these energies are so amazing, because with the way we do our Shintosai astrology and Shintosai lunar dancing we're throughout every aspect of life. And because we're such a multi potentialite, we've got a whole chart covered in these energies with the collective and us in the way we do it with the comparison because the comparison is the relationship it's the relationship it's the relate ratio it's the bonding it's the comparing between one two thing and another to see which things are the constants that overlap with the vedic astrology and the western astrology the traditional and the modern no wonder we're on one but we're on one and our on one now isn't like what it was like before it's full on it's probably to a uh, limited, naive, layman person, weird, out there and a bit crazy. But it's if we're feeling it's more cohesive and coherent, and while our internal reality is aligned with the external realities, then it is we feel it's co then it is coherent and cohesive to the the other as well. And to the ones that it isn't coherent and cohesive, isn't anything to do with us and what we're saying. It's to do with their own fragmentation and dissociation, and trauma stuff. Okay, we can go now. One hour, 58, 24 seconds, 25. So we've got there, wherever there is, another end of another chapter. Oh, it is exciting to see how this flows, but we have to take the breathers and the breaths. Um, cap quick on this either. We got so, see, we see how long we've been doing moon stuff for. 
it goes back 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We're on the seventh year of lunar living from different perspectives of us. So, like, thank you, um, Kathy, for saying in that Shintosa I lift room alive. Um, with thorough in our exploration because we are because we have to be because we get we need to find the stuff that works for all of us and <laughs> that overlaps um and thank you e for saying that our flow state is beautiful um that really we've read those comments a lot between us on that last one so we're in june we're on monday eight thirty. oh okay so it's eight thirty one. A.M. What time did the void of course start? We check between lots of different things as well for our void of course. We've got our ephemeris that we're using as well, but we're learning words with that one at the moment. And we've got our app on here. So we've got four, at least four of our own tools that we use between the phone, the child, easy book, adult book. Oh, we've got a diary. Okay, yeah. So it went into void, of course. Ah, oh, 11, ah, oh, no wonder last night's been whatever. No, because you've got to add five hours. Oh, yeah, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So from 4.24, it's been void, of course, and 8.30, 4.24 to 8.31. So we started this in, so we started this in void, of course, between Sagittarius and Capricorn, between the energetic patternings. So the constant is the Gemini sun, the nervous system, the lungs, the hands, the arms, the shoulders. There might be some more stuff in that. Because this book says um, same and slightly different to Astro Seek, which we also use for the body parts. But then we've got another two different books or more on body parts relations. <laughs> so they're different people's perspectives. They're all their individual truths. We take the we take the different people perspectives and the individual their truths that overlap on our constants to be our constant. And as things progress with us, with everything, we're going to tap in and connect to our body of which we're really connected um, and see what it says for us, because it's all there. There's about 70, you know, Hindu philosophy says there's like 72,000 nadis, which are the channels, the ve arteries, the veins, the nervous system that the electrochemical and electromagnetic energy flows down. Um So when we say source energy, because Rob asked this question once to us and we weren't able to say it. We, wasn't, we weren't able to say it. We weren't able to say it, but the people weren't able to, ready to hear it because this is something that people need to experience on their own. But for us, source energy is like Capricorn. Capricorn is the skin and the bones, knees and joints. But the bones are the deepest of the body. Okay, the bone marrow is part of the deepest of the body. But on one level of density and vibrational frequency, the bone's the deepest of the body and the skin's the most external of the body, the biggest organ the skin is. Um, and source energy, that's what source energy is like. Source energy isn't just one focal point like the sun. The sun is one form of source energy. Um like the bones one form of depth of the body but the, the sun is a form of light source energy the purest form of source energy comes from the void the darkness and the void isn't just one focal point it's the deeper inner and the outer like the taurus because the taurus is the multiversal universal flow of life we are taurus in our body we are a taurus if we manage to get wholeness and completeness between all of our bodies but you have Tauruses within Tauruses within Tauruses within Tauruses, depending on the fractal level, the inception, the depth, the layers of the body. But then that goes outwards as well. And so you've got always moving around Tauruses 
on earth with each individual human that then have to interact and energetically with each other but then the humans you've got little maybe families but then you've got maybe villages or communities or towns or cities or counties or states countries um continents and then the globe um but then you have the nature one as well so it's just all these and that's why the visual data the way people visualize data and put the information along at the moment on earth with the lights and the nodes and the countryside and you've got the dark bits and the blackouts and the lights it's the same for us as well um we used to love france because at like two o'clock in the morning all the late lights would go off and the stargazing would be amazing and then we were in a village we'd go on holiday in a little village town so you'd be able to go out and lay in the middle of the road of this village town uh, after two o'clock in the morning and just see shooting star after shooting star after shooting star um it's time to go we're enjoying making the connection but we need to rest we need to know the balance so it's all about the darkness